So for that, there we go. As we live. are live. Hello, everybody out there. This is Ellie, Carol, and Lynn from the Million Dollar Mission, and we are on a mission tonight. We're going to talk about what works, the many ways uh, for blogging for profit. And, you know, if you like to make money, like we do, um, <laughs> you're going to enjoy this one because we're going to throw out some ideas on different ways, uh, you know, that you can profit with your blogging. Now, before we do that, we got to do our, our customary toast. So here's to all you, you know, people that are in it to win it for blogging Cheers. for profit. Cheers to MDM. Cheers. In it to win it. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with, you know, I was thinking about this today, about our topic, you know, blogging for profit. And there's there's some some weird thinking out there that people, I don't know, they seem to think that once they have a blog, uh, that all of a sudden it's supposed to magically sell for them. Okay? Well, it can if you have it set up properly and if you know how to market rather than sell because the sell word is going out the door and I don't know if you've been on social media like Gary V and uh, you know some of these other big marketers um, even Frank Kern I mean they're all talking about how marketing is not selling we're making connections and that's what your blog is going to do if you make connections bring people to your blog and you have your blog set up properly, guess what? You're, you're going to start building a business. You're going to start selling stuff on its own as if it were magic. But it doesn't do it on its own. So you have to make sure that you have your blog set up right. And by the way, you know, Ellie, Carol, and I, we prefer Kalatu. And now we prefer Kalatu Premium because we earn extra money that way. If you want more information on that, there's a button below, so you can click that, you know, down there and, and uh, learn more about that. But we're not talking about specifically Kalat tonight. We're going to give you more, you know, insight into blogging for profit. So my number one takeaway is be prepared. Have your blogging site prepared um, to connect with folks, to attract people to you and be prepared to share the information that's going to help them with whatever it is they're looking for that you specifically have chosen for either your business or your career or your profession or whatever it is that you know that you're wanting to um, market sell and profit okay that's the other thing you know you, you don't just put on a Clickbank product and call it a day <laughs> okay you got to build around that. If, if you want to sell ClickBank products, that's okay. But start blogging about it, right? And then have clickable links that go to your ClickBank, you know, products and that kind of thing. Write articles, do videos. All these kinds of things are going to help you blogging for profit, okay? So I'm that's my kickoff to our Hangout tonight. And I'm going to throw it over now to either Carol or Ellie on on the next aspect of, you know, different aspects of blogging for profit. Take it away, well, gals. Well, one of the things is that my question is, are you serious about your business? Are you serious about blogging? And if you are, then I have to ask, how many times, how often do you blog? Now, there's actually no rule of thumb about this. Some people say, you should blog every day. Some people say once a week. Some people say every other day. If you're brandy, brandy new, it might be a good idea to get started just by blogging every day for, for a while, just to, at least the 21 days, just to get in the habit of it. And uh, then later on, uh, you'll learn that uh, you can establish a uh, what they call a pillar blog, which is a... Uh, a, a, a very lengthy blog. It's usually around 2,000, 3,000 words and it has pictures and images and maybe uh, uh, infographics and uh, videos and what have you in it related to a particular topic and uh, needless to say it's loaded with uh, content value information. So uh, in between there, in between the newbie who's just blogging every day just to get in the habit and somebody who's building these pillar posts is, uh, as uh, Lynn said, just, uh, you know, blog and uh, be attractive in your blogging. Be hunted, not the hunter. Uh, put out your videos in the blog. 
uh, attract people to you by uh, appealing to your target market. That's very important to know who it is that you're blogging to. And also, um, you want to, uh, as I said, get your contact, content and value out there and definitely, definitely, definitely have a call to action at the end. Whether that might be, come meet me on Facebook, uh, click on the button below and that will bring the person to a uh, capture page uh, where you get their email address so you can follow up with them on uh, emails to continue to relate with them. Whatever whatever the uh, method that you might use to uh, uh, for a uh, CTA, a uh, call to action. Now if you do get their uh, email ad address, the uh, joy of that is that you can then uh, follow up as I mentioned with the emails and continue to build a relationship because very often is it that somebody will uh, purchase the first time around. Um, I've heard it said anywhere from seven to twelve times that you have to uh, contact somebody and be in touch with them before they're uh, before they know you, before they like you, before they trust you, and before they're willing to buy from you. So uh, my question is at the end of this, are you a tourist in your business or are you serious about your business? So that said, uh, uh, Ali, would you like to pick up on something? I like that. Are you a tourist or are you a serious or a visitor? Yeah. Are you a tourist or a visitor? Deb just put a great question in the group there and she's saying, what is the best way to build a list from nothing? How do you use your blog for that? That is a Fabulous question. So, you know, I, we were just on a hangout earlier today. If I have spinach in my teeth, it's because I tried to eat dinner before we hang out. I think I got it out. But anyways, um, and you know, in, in 2007, I got online. I did, a, a, at that time, I had to do a WordPress blog, which means I had to learn how to be technical. I had actually been using WordPress for several years before that. That was an interesting scenario. But um, I didn't know what I was doing. I knew nothing about search engine optimization. I knew nothing about keywords. I really didn't. And I just started to blog. Now, here's what happened. I did end up connecting with other bloggers within my community. In other words, within the niche, like, I talked about law of attraction, other people were talking about law of attraction, personal development. It's all the same kind of niche. And I still believe this. First of all, we have an advantage, uh, uh, the folks here, um, because we have communities actually set up already. And we do do that. We go to each other's blogs and we comment because the more comments on your blog, the more Google decides it's important. If somebody links to your blog, Google thinks that's important. So, in other words, it's being shown out there more as, as people are searching. Um, so I did start to learn about keywords. Just from being in these communities talking to other bloggers a little bit, not anything like I know today. So that is important. I have to be careful with that. I don't want to write a, um, a whole blog just about a keyword. It, for me, it's about writing the blog and then seeing the keyword. And today, you know, there's like years ago, it was more, more keywords, although I never did that. I didn't ever do any of that black hat stuff, throw a bunch of keywords in there. But today, it's relevancy. So just like we're talking about uh, creating a relationship, in essence, you're creating a relevant relationship with your reader within your blog. So now here's what I did. I created a, uh, a, a an ebook, Four Steps to Creating a Life You Desire. That's actually what I created when I was using that other blog. Um, and that's how I got email addresses. And I have to tell you this, because I was online a lot, I didn't like pop-ups, I didn't like them because I'm online so much, okay, like they're popping up and some of them were huge and some of them were cuckoo and 
Somebody <laughs> kept saying to me, use a pop-up, use a pop-up. I'm like, oh, I hate those things. People hate them. That ain't true, okay? When I, I was using AWeber at the time, it's an autoresponder, and when I put a pop-up in there, I couldn't believe the increase in the rate of subscribers. You know, now I had my uh, little widget, what you want to call it, plug in right over here in the right hand top corner above the fold is what it's called. See, I learned all these words after a while. I didn't know none of this stuff when I started. But that pop up actually grabbed the people over and over again. You know, so creating, knowing your target market, to me, I think that's the hugest thing. And right? if you know who you're talking to and you create, your content for that person, you create the content for that person. It's funny, actually, Carol and I are in a, in a class about this, but you and I was doing that without realizing I was. I was creating content for that person, then those keywords were relevant to them. The, uh, the blog was relevant for them. I had a tendency. Some of you know that Carol said on stage that I was the talker. So <laughs> I can, and she's more the blogger, okay? But when I blog, I blog like I talk. Oh, baby, I go to town. So there's no 200-word things for me, all right? I easy did 2,000-word um, posts, and I have to laugh because people used to go, oh, you're doing too much. You could break that into three different blog post, you probably could have. You could have done that. I've done that every now and then. That was probably a 5,000 word post I broke into two. But that was who I am. I was just rolling out. This is how I was, you know, I was typing. I actually talk when I type. So um, I have to leave because we were at one of the trainings we were at and they were talking about 2,000 word posts. Okay? They're important having that much meaty information. And I did. It wasn't just a bunch of blah. Okay, it was meaty information within there. So, I mean, I think if you're starting from something brand new, whatever it is, if it's about personal development, if it's about arts and crafts, if it's about fixing cars, all right, not only do you want to talk to that, to that, to that, audience you want to talk to them okay because you can bridge to them because there are people who are looking to make money in in, in maybe in this business that are in uh, a crest or fixing cars and there are affiliate products for all of those things you can go to Amazon and get a free affiliate account when I realized that years ago I was like whoa I like this you know but I think having that freebie is a big deal. I do. I think that people are not going to give you their email address just to join your list unless they're getting something back in return. You know, and some of them will unsubscribe right away. They just wanted your item and they're going to go away. And that's actually good. So, and, and the other thing is, when I was in this community with other bloggers, remember what I was saying, we were already commenting on each other's blogs. So that's really, really important. And I know we have our own community, but I go outside of our own community beyond that. I look for people who talk and blog about the things that... Is my target market, when I say my target market, it's really what interests me. You know, I go out there. Because when you make sure, when you leave a comment, all right, you make sure you have what they call a gravatar. If, if somebody's new here and they don't know what that is, go look it up. G-R-A-V-A-T-A-R dot com. So you have your picture. You have, you're able to link your picture or your name, to uh, your website. And I would get visitors like that. I was on somebody's blog. I read their blog. I liked their article. I didn't put out BS. All right? I didn't say, great blog. That's not a comment, folks. And nobody wants nothing to do with that. I gave an, my opinion or my experience of reading their blog. 
I would write it out. And because I took the time to do that, and yes, there's time involved in that, but because I took the time to do that, I would get people that would click on my comment, on my name, and would come back to my blog. So we, we have that community built in, like with Lynn and Carol and myself. We actually have a community like that. It's great to get comments on there before you put it out to the world. You know, I'm one of those people. I'm a scanner. I get to your blog post, and let me tell you what. If that blog post tells me the date, not all of them do, and it's more than three days old, and it says zero comments, I probably am not reading it. Now, look, that's probably not good, okay, but I have limited time. It might be a fabulous article, unless that headline really grabbed me. If I see zero comments, I'm like, hmm, whatever, I'm going over here. All right, unless, again, that headline really grabbed me, and if I started to scan that article, and I am a scanner, that they grabbed me at points. So that's why bolding and using the H2 and H3 tags are really important, so that you grab the scanner's attention. I have gone all the way down to the end, and something grabbed me, or somebody's comment grabbed me, and then I went back up and I actually read the article. I do that all the time. I have to, you know, be honest there. So if I do that, I'm not the only person in the world that does that. So so we're looking to do, so if you're doing affiliate marketing, you can do that, right? You can go be an affiliate at Amazon. Uh, Lynn mentioned ClickBank. You can go to ClickBank and find products. I hope you're promoting products that you yourself know about. It's my opinion. You know, um, there are tools that we use, like I, I mentioned, an autoresponder. So we will put that on our blog because we use that tool. So I recommend it. There are uh, uh, tools we use for funnels. So I'll put that on my blog because we recommend it. I'm not somebody that normally, you know, will recommend something. Maybe a Wayne Dyer book, okay? If I haven't read it yet, I would probably still recommend it because I love him because I think I've read every book the man's ever written. So there are ways to do reviews for things, and you can just be an affiliate marker. You can be um, for, for several different... And now, even Walmart has an affiliate program. You know, it's not just like Amazon anymore. Even Walmart has an affiliate program. So there's just, just so many ways. Anyways, I hope, I hope I made a little sense here about, you know, how to do how to start getting that list going. I think having a free report, some kind of PDF, that's really, really important. I'll be quiet here. Let somebody else know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, I'm to, going to uh, uh, add to that, Ellie, because uh, one thing I learned, I did try making an ebook. This was several years ago when I had my charm jewelry business. Someone said the same thing. You know, write an ebook and give it away, right? <laughs> it took me months to write this ebook because, you know, Miss Perfect here. Um, and yeah. plus, people were telling me, oh no, it's got to be more informative and all this. Well, what I've learned lately, like in the last two years, anything that you blog about, you could turn that into a PDF and that can be a giveaway. And like Ellie was talking about with the keywords, you can set that up with the keywords. Now, here's what I do. I do what's called the double whammy, where I'll write a blog post that's around that keyword, and I'll do a video. I'll mm -hmm. upload the video to YouTube with those keywords, and it's just a short minute, two minute um, video that's really introducing the blog post. So then the link is in the video on YouTube that goes back to the blog post, the blog post is talking, so is the video talking about that keyword, right? And your call to action can be, by the way, I've got this free PDF, you know, this is for, for you to grab today before you leave. You can do something like that, but now you're getting seen, especially if you have the clock to, you know, blogging platform, on the first page of Google, probably the same thing from, you know, uh, YouTube, because I have found most of the time both my video and my blog post on the first page of Google. So then if you're con um, congruent with what you're giving away because of what you're writing about, 
that is the big key that I found that people are going to then opt in, right? They're going to subscribe to you. They want that free PDF. Here's the other thing that the missing piece. And again, this is all years of me tearing my hair out. And, you know, when Ellie tells some stories, Ellie, you remind me of me when I, you know, back then too, I felt like this lonely island trying to learn it all, thinking I had to put it all together and always saying there's got to be a system. There's got to be a better way than all this, right? So what I've learned lately is to also create a new campaign in your autoresponder with that keyword because then you'll always remember if you if you want to do uh, broadcast emails you're like oh yeah that's right I was talking about getting Twitter followers okay I'll send out another email to them direct them back to maybe a product this time maybe you're gonna do a hangout maybe you're gonna do a webcast you know whatever it is but at least now you're warming up your audience but they already know what you're gonna be talking about so hopefully that makes sense because um, that's the one missing key that I think um, I, I actually got it from Mike Hobbs as far as focusing in on just one aspect of what it is that you want to maybe give away to people and to get on your list and what is the reason the purpose behind that because if you don't have the plan then all you're doing is you're you're you're, you're marketing to everyone and like Aaron Rashkin says then you're marketing to no one okay and people think that they think you know what if I just throw my link out there, the people that are interested will click on, the other people won't. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. It kind of hurts you sometimes, even like in Facebook, on your edge rank, on, on even, you know, uh, on Google, you know, for getting um, on Google's first page and all that kind of thing. Focus in on what it is, your plan for that blog post or how you want to people to subscribe to you. Um, for me, a lot of times, um, I'm in like a promotion mode. That's what my blog is all about. But I do a lot of hangouts like this and workshops and all kinds of other things that will stream back to certain blog posts that I've written. Um, but try that. Try that. Go back to your previous blog posts and see maybe you had a really good article that or post that you did that people commented on and really liked. Turn that into a PDF. Put, slap a nice cover you know, on it and give that away and create your own little campaign and your autoresponder and you know give that a whirl so that that's that's one of my ideas so over to Carol there we go okay uh, just to follow up on what uh, Ellie mentioned about uh, getting your blog out there and that is uh, having people comment on it and also going outside of EN. Well, first of all, let me back up for a moment. It doesn't hurt any to start off syndicating uh, within EN just so that you get uh, some comments on it and uh, some extra uh, value, if you will, onto it. Then, once you get them, you can start uh, syndicating uh, outside of EN. And uh, Ellie said she, she often uh, will try to target somebody in particular or some group or something. Um, I lately have been using uh, the old standbys, uh, Tumblr, StumbleUpon, LinkedIn, and uh, I have been getting some results from uh, StumbleUpon in particular. Um, also, in addition to the uh, uh, video, uh, you can also uh, put on a podcast and throw that into uh, an audio onto your uh, blog. It's a little different uh, medium that can be used. Um, and just recently I, I was on a uh, hangout with someone who's a, a well-known blogger and she was saying that uh, it's a good idea sometimes to make a series and this particularly if you're having a, a, like writer's block and you can't think of what you're going to write about uh, and you, you find yourself getting stuck sometimes. Uh, Take a book that you've read and uh, make a series out of each chapter, one after the other. Um, or, you know, something, I can't think of anything else right now offhand, but that, that's particularly what she mentioned. Or, um, uh, I don't know, maybe some TV shows that you've been watching or, or something that uh, would have some value uh, to them that you'd want to uh, make a series out of. And uh, you've got your blogs set out for you for 
a week maybe or so, depending on how many chapters or series there are. So um, the other thing too uh, that El I think it was Ellie who mentioned um, the bridge. Now that's a imp very important part of the uh, blog. Um, and let me back up a little bit here. The blog is your hub. It's the home of your business. And as uh, Lynn was saying, you go out and you, you put into Facebook, you do your Hangouts, your whatever, and you're going to find yourself uh, aiming everything right back to your blog again. And that's where, uh, that's how you attract people also. And uh, that's where your uh, marketing takes place. So how do you do that? In addition to uh, uh, having the uh, banners and what have you on your blog, you also do this bridge, which uh, carries people over from the content of the blog into um, how they might uh, make some money uh, in your business. And you, you, know, you can go anywhere with that. Um, oftentimes, I will direct people uh, right to our blog that our company has, uh, as we mentioned, the Kalatu Premium, uh, because I am blogging and we're talking about blogging, so uh, that seems to be a logical thing. But it all depends on, on whom I'm speaking to at that particular time, where I would direct them. So um, I think that's what I have to say at this point. You, you know, I, I want to say this. If you're brand new on here and you're like, what the hell is a PDF and how do I do this and what's a stumble upon? Actually, I did stumble upon years ago. And and haven't and have, I need to go back to that. But um, there was no Facebook when I was around. Okay, there was Twitter. That was a big deal then. Um, and that's kind of how some of us met up with each other. If you don't know how to make a PDF, first of all, just write out a document. Okay, go to Fiverr. I think it's F-I-V-E-R-R dot com and pay somebody five bucks and they'll turn it into a PDF for you. And eventually you can do it yourself. Or if you're making enough money, you always let somebody do it for you. Okay, but when we're talking, I mean, I have an e-book and it's several pages long. But what I'm seeing now, people love this kind of stuff. Seven ways to, okay, eight ti nine tips that, the only reason odd numbers are weirder, okay? Nine ways, you know, nine how-to tips or two pages, a two-page document, write it out in Word. If you don't know how to make it into a PDF file, I mean, there are, I think, free PDF creators now on the web. You know, uh, Google that. If you don't want to play with that, go to Fiverr and pay somebody five bucks. Make sure when you go to Fiverr, you go in there and you look for somebody who's rated high, all right, not the cheapest, and and you get that done. Um, and all these other ways, you know, it. This is. Hey, Ellie. If you're, if you're hey, Ellie. Oh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just before you move on from the PDF, the, the reason why I brought up, I think PDFs are so important. It's the other thing that you can do inside a PDF is you can link. You can link things, so like your footer or other words inside your PDF can be linked back to a product page, your blog, you know, a video. So I just wanted to point that out that a PDFs, that's why they're so um, important and why so many marketers and, you know, successful business people use them is because of that fact too. Just wanted to throw that in there. Oh, absolutely. And so if you don't know how to do one of those, when you're going to somebody with your PDF, you're telling them, I want this link to my blog post, I want this link to my blog, I want this link to my sales page, whatever it is, and they will link that for you. So when the person opens it on their computer, they're hitting links and they're going, you know, to where you're going. And when I was talking about bridge marketing, you know, uh, um, maybe all you're doing, looking to do is sell uh, Amazon books and audiobooks from Audible, you know, so you're just going to, and, and that might be all you're looking to do, so, but you got to then do articles about that book, articles about that topic, okay, and then link to it, link to it, link to it. If you're doing a business like we're doing, okay, and you're talking about uh, law of attraction, it's a big topic for me, okay, 
you're then going to bridge with them there. So it really depends what your blog is about. But there's so many different affiliate programs now, it's crazy. All right, you know, it's like every, you know, some of them are tiny, tiny profits. But you know, there are people who made big bucks and can still and can and continue to on Amazon. Now, when we were talking about Colato Premium, so when with Colato Premium we have ten blogs. You think, what the hell? Maybe I don't even have one yet. What do I want with ten blogs? So if you're going to do review sites, all right, let's say you are going to review household appliances because if I was doing Amazon I would be looking for the big ticket item because they pay a little percentage all right but if you sell enough big ticket items so you sell enough refrigerators or you know uh, in in the wall microwaves or in the wall air conditioners okay you can sell a bunch of them you're gonna get a decent check now I know people that have done that um, with vacuum cleaners so you can set up one blog just about maybe household equipment and then you could categorize it okay and sell stuff like that so there's so much you can do Clickbank is all um, it's, it's information products so they're great you know I personally I have to use the product before I'm gonna before I'm gonna recommend it but you want to know what, what whatever you're gonna do again Walmart Target Macy's, they got all, they all got affiliate programs. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I never go tell somebody, here's what the deal is. When you tell somebody, oh, I bought this lovely jacket, t shirt, at Macy's, all right, they go and get it, and Macy's gets the money, and you don't get nothing. If you tell them on the internet, I bought this lovely t shirt at Macy's, here's where you can get it, you can. You know, it, it's a it's a referral. It's a referral. So that's a great way. No matter what you're doing, you can always if if we write about books, I put my Amazon link in there. Don't think I don't. You know, um so I just wanted to say some of the stuff, some of you are know all of this, and some of you are like stumble upon Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. <laughs> Here's to me the huge advantage of what we do. We, we do all have Colato Premium, so we do have 10 blogs. We can do landing pages. And if you're still brand new and you're like, what the hell is she talking about? We have a community that tells you what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> it explains it, right? We, we, um, and we have uh, products that explain and, and uh, teach on how to, how to bring stuff out into the market, how to do that. And and I was one of those techie people with WordPress. Okay, I don't gotta worry about updating WordPress. I'm not gonna do all of that. That's all with, with Kalatu. It's all done back here. And if you think that's not a big deal, I know you never did it before. That's all I can say. If you think it's not a big deal to have to pay attention to this and plugins and what plugin did that plugin update when WordPress updated because if it didn't it just broke my damn site and I've had it done so if you think it's not a big deal you've never done it before Carol's never done it she's like yeah this is who you see I'm like mm -hmm. I get it <laughs> so that's what I gotta say tonight <laughs> who's jumping in here <laughs> well <laughs> You crack me up, Ellie. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, I think we're throwing out a bunch of ideas. Like you say, um, maybe the next thing is is focus. You know, really focus. If, if, if you're struggling right now, if you're not making any sales in whatever business that you're in, okay, just step back and really think. Write down, you know, on a tablet, what are you doing right now? And if you are writing down all these different things that you're doing, then maybe it's the focus, you know, that, that you have to get back to. It, yeah, and understand exactly what is it that you want to accomplish. What is it that you want to do? People have to connect with you somehow. And i got to tell you something. When I finally got it through this big, thick skull of, of sharing my story, the minute I started sharing about being an ex-corporate robot mom, 
I have, even today, I, I mean, I, I get messages from people that are connecting with me based on that, all right? So when you share your story, when you know really what it is, where you're coming from, and what you want to do to help other people, that will help you to focus and dial in on what it is that you want to accomplish. And don't try to eat the whole pie, you know? I think a lot of people try to you know, they, 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 want, they want it all. They want to do it all, learn it all, know it all, and you can't. So you have to take these little steps and learn something today so that will move you forward tomorrow, and it'll just keep building and building and building. And, and I think maybe that's, that's one key here is if you're not, I mean, you know, even in profit, if you're not selling anything, obviously you're not going to be in profit. So if, uh, if that's the case, and I think maybe, you know, offering a suggestion of getting back into focus. And I know Carol is really good with the mindset thing, so I'm going to pass it off to her. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely, the focus. Um, but I'm going to take a little sidestep for a moment here because one thing that we haven't touched upon, and it's a little bit of a tangent, uh, is... Uh, if a person has their own brick and mortar business and uh, using the uh, blog to uh, promote that, uh, certainly uh, we're talking to a particular uh, target audience. Um, maybe I'm talking to a, uh, a woman who's uh, just coming out of the corporate world and uh, wondering how on earth is she going to retire and she just got fired from her job and what have you. That's the person I might be talking to. but her husband might have a little pizza joint in town or something. So, I mean, he could as well use the blog to promote his business, um, show his menu on it, uh, different specials, uh, coupons that he might have, whatever. And oh, lately, um, what's come out is uh, actually going into your town and approaching uh, business people uh, to uh, offer to do a review for them. You do it on your blog and uh, at the same time you can promote uh, the possibility of their purchasing a blog so that uh, once you do the review and they see that there's some kind of a response to it that uh, they might want to uh, purchase a blog from you and uh, you know get their own thing going rather than either nothing they might just be advertising in the local newspaper or the yellow pages and it's probably costing them an arm and a leg, or they might have just a static uh, website that's doing nothing and it, they forget to update it or it's, it's just old-fashioned looking, it's, it's not attracting people. So, um, yeah, to get back to the focus, um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I just did a blog today and I, I haven't published it yet, uh, on uh, focus and uh, how important that is. Uh, we can so easily get sidetracked, uh, distracted by so many things. Uh, the technology today, the uh, uh, family responsibilities, job responsibilities, worries over bills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but it, it's so important to keep the uh, the focus, as Lynn said, keep a positive focus, belief in what you're doing. Uh, knowing, if you can get yourself to that point beyond the belief, to actually knowing that what you're doing is the right thing for you, that you can do it, and that it will be worth putting your effort into it. Um, and I guess that's about it that I have to say for right now. <laughs> mm, you, you know, um, when you're talking about focus, you know, also the aspect of, um, so we, we, we just rolled off with a whole Twitter stumble upon. And if you're brand new, you don't know what the hell we're talking about. And if you're around, I've done this anyway. Oh crap, I gotta go do them all. Okay, and then you master none of them. And look, I've been there, done that. You know, here was the here was the advantage when I started out in 2007. Although I had to be very technical learning WordPress the way I had to learn it. And I learned how to hack it, make it do what I wanted it to do. But <laughs> um, there was only really Twitter and StumbleUpon. And Reddit might have started becoming up, but there wasn't 
as many. It wasn't as you know, Facebook wasn't out there yet. Um, there wasn't all this other LinkedIn wasn't out there yet. All this other stuff wasn't out there yet. It was really like Twitter was the big deal. So it's actually how some of us just connected with each other. And and I don't know if it was so much I was even dealing with clients on Twitter as much as I was dealing with um, colleagues, people within the same industry as me anyways. And so we went to each other's blog. So if it's all overwhelming, slow down. If you're thinking, I got to do it all, here's what, you know, we're, cons we're constantly taught this, and I have to tell you, guilty, okay? I don't always pay attention. Master one thing first. Some people say one or two, and I think, no, you got to get damn close to mastery to that one before you bring that second one in. And then you'll master that one, and you'll be damn close to mastery on that second one, and then bring that next one in. So I'm not saying you can't run, but if you're really learning something brandy new, and I'm talking to me now. If you're not listening to me, it don't matter, because I'm listening to me. Oh, my God, I've tried to do too many different things. And then each, I don't master them, each one suffers a little bit. So, you know, I still say my biggest, biggest um, tip in all of this is you're blogging, it's your real estate, it's your real estate on the internet. It lasts forever. It's out there forever. Twitter goes like this, shoom! Okay, Facebook goes a little slower. Whoop. But it's, it's pretty, it's damn. Your blog is there. Your blog is there. So get yourself, don't say you don't know nothing about nothing. You know so much stuff. Go make a two-page report. Put it up there for free. You need to have an autoresponder, right? And um, and that's how you start building a list. Let those people opt in. And if you've got one and it's not getting it, like Lynn said, you better go back and look. Are you really targeting are your keywords targeting your people? All right. Are you truly in your target market? Are you truly talking to them? And does that report freebie what you have? Is it congruent with your message? So congruency sometimes is huge. We have a tendency to not realize, oh, I'm not really being congruent. I'm saying a gazillion things. You know, some people say I have the alphabet thing, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, D, whatever they want to call it. And so I can go all over the place. You know, I get that. And so I have to make myself focus just to be congruent and stay in one topic at a time. So that's what that's what I got tonight. Throw it over the All right. Well, unfortunately, Fortunately, we are coming up to the end of our hangout tonight because we need to uh, go to another hangout, a webcast, if you will, for Kalachu Premium. And that's another um, advantage to Kalachu Premium is they are now holding, this is the first one, I believe, tonight, where they have a Q&A, where we can ask our questions and they're going to answer you know, our questions uh, specifically to blogging on and, and you know anything else that you want to know about the Kalachu Premium. So if you've been you know thinking about Kalachu Premium and you've been hearing about it and going what the heck is this, you can click the button, give it a try. There's a 14 day uh, money back guarantee. So you know if, if you think now this thing is not for me, that's fine. But try it out because if you're like I think Carol mentioned if you're serious about your business, Kalachu Premium is the platform for you. Okay, it is a blogging for profit platform. All right, and we're going to hold more of these hangouts and give you more ideas and things like that. Um, you know, um, I think Deb gave us some a good suggestion of what we can, you know, move into for next week or maybe you know further down the line. But um, please leave your comments and questions below, or you know, suggestions of what. What other things are hanging you up? You know, what are stopping you from moving forward and having success in your business? Whether you're, you know, on Carol and Ellie's team or my team, what it doesn't matter, right? If you're not in Empower, it doesn't matter. We're, this information is to everyone. We want to improve the industry as a whole, so everybody has the same success strategies, if you will, so you can apply them to your business, whatever that may be. So. That's all we got for you tonight, but we well, we got to have our final uh, toast. 
for the uh, for our MDM, the Million Dollar Mission, and we're still on that mission, folks. So join yes. us. <laughs> Cheers. All right, we're going out. We'll see you next Tuesday.